good evening everyone uh, welcome you all for the 25th live session of the student journal club and networking program today our speaker is mr rohit mishra from the carkinos healthcare who will discuss about introduction to somatic mutation calling and its impl implication mr mishra is a computational biologist with 6 years of experience in handling multiomics datasets he after completing his masters in bioinformatics he has worked under the guidance of dr amit dutt at actrec as a scientific officer where he backed various publications he has an experience in handling hplc clusters and uh, cloud platforms he also contributed to development of various pipelines to analyze next generation sequencing data using python and r programming languages now he has moved to carkinos healthcare where he is working as a bioinformatician who handles multiomics datasets so i will welcome mr rohit here and i will uh, request every one of you to post your questions in the chat box uh, over to you uh, thank you archishman uh, good evening all uh, i am rohit mishra and today i will be presenting my topic that is introduction to somatic mutation calling and its application implication so first of all uh, talking about very basics that is genomics so first of all we need to understand what is genomics because Uh, for understanding the var variants, we need to understand what exactly is genomics. Because without genomics, we can't understand the mu mutations. So, genome is a uh, term which was coined in 1986 by Jackson Laboratory, uh, named Tom Broderick. So, this genome is an entire set of DNA which has instruction that is present in the cell. So, DNA itself is made up of four chemical units. That is adenine, that is represented with A, guanine, that is G. c cytosine and t that is thymine so this if you see uh, this dna over here yeah sorry let me turn on the pointer yeah so this dna what we are talking about is made up of a g c and t bases so a chromosome here is a sim is simply a very long piece of dna and we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and talking about genes genes is a stretch of dna on a chromosome that has instructions to make a product that is like uh, each gene will get converted to different proteins so this is what the central dog dogma is that dna is getting converted to rna and rna is getting converted to proteins so once we are clear with the few terminologies over here what we need to understand is what are the utility of the genomics that is uh, where exactly it plays an important role so it can uh, genomics can help us to a uh, diagnose the various diseases that is to identify genetic mutations we all know that there are several mutations which keeps on happening with respect to different environmental factors with related to uh, and also related which are related to food and several other things so these genetic mutations can be identified with the help of genome genomics so and it also can helps in early and accurate diagnosis of disease second is precision medicine genomics plays very important role because every individual has different genomic profiles and this different profile of a genome can help us to treat or provide better medical treatments to patients third this is a our today's topic that will be cancer genomics that is like characterizing genetic mutation which are present in cancer cells and several personalized treatments which are uh, which can be provided to cancer patients so a uh, genomics it also uh, it it plays a very important role to research on genomics because it can help us to advance our information about uh, genetics and also to uncover different genes pathways and pot potential therapeutic targets so uh, this is the last terminology that is like uh, genomics plays a very important role in evo evolutionary studies that is investigating the genetic changes over the evolutionary period of time and understanding the genetic basis of adaptation so now we are clear with the genomics but for genomics what we need to do is sequencing so sequencing is a process where we generate thousands to million of dna fragments simultaneously uh, sequencing is faster and more cost effective as compared to the traditional methods and what we also get is base by base resolution like we can i easily identify a t g and c bases these bases with very good uh, resolution whether it is dna or a rna molecule 
what this picture also represent is about different type uh, different generation of sequencing where we also have short read sequencing where the uh, sequencing length is small and where uh, the song sequencing length is bigger or, so, or the longer so talking about ngs th that is next generation sequencing it is divided into four parts that is extraction so to understand genome what we need to is uh, do is we need to extract dna so once dna is extracted uh, we uh, uh, the second step we go to second step that is library preparation where there is a template and this template is a dna and it is fragmented into different uh, of different uh, regions or length and certain adapters or uh, certain adapters are ligated to it which goes to the third step that is the sequencing that is a sequ uh, sequencer machine is present where this uh, ligated uh, fragment is provided to the sequencer machine and uh, the fourth step is the analysis where the fastq file that is an output file which is generated from the sequencer machine uh, is generated so once we have this fastq file what are the uh, like how exactly we will proceed further to make a somatic variant call first of all like somatic why i am saying because it is related to cancer before that i will be talking about more specific about variants first so this is the common workflow for analyzing any genomic data that we have that is like once we have genomic data depending on whether it is a dna sequencing or rna sequencing so here i will be talking majorly about dna sequencing uh, it depends like uh, if we are going with whole genome or whole exome that is like exonic region we know that only 2% of uh, genome is uh, coding region so here if it is uh, whole exome which is cheaper as compared to whole genome so depending on what kind of sequencing we have performed we get fastq file so there this is the step where the quality is checked of the fastq file and then further this reads whatever we get okay so dna is dna was sequenced now now this dna are in the form of reads in the fastq file so these we don't know where exactly this is belong this belongs to so what we do is we align it to reference genome we already know that human genome was sequenced long back so we already have a reference genome and now we have done sequencing where we have reads now this reads have, are aligned to this known human reference genome and we generate we get different file formats and from that files what we do is we perform variant analysis from this variant analysis there are multiple things which we can analyze that is somatic variant analysis germline variant analysis and mutational signature my major topic would here be somatic variant analysis where we will be talking about somatic settings so once we have all this information now i will be going further with the fast q file types because uh, what we need to understand when we have the file we have fast q file we have vcf file intermediate is sam and bam which we are, which i am not going to talk about in today's uh, session but fast q file uh, is very important because this is where exactly the read is so once the dna was fragmented so once the dna is fragmented we get different uh, length of reads this one line the second line where i am highlighting exactly right now is a read so what we see is that it's like g a t t this kind of bases are present in a read so this is one read which is uh, in which is separated with the header that is that starts with at the rate sign then this is the read this is an optional where we can write any descript optional description if i want to write about the read and these are the values associated with the bases so if i say g then it is it is representing over here as an exclamation that is an sky value if we convert it maybe around 30 it ranges from 30 to 70 like that value is associated with this so now we know that this uh, there is a converter i mean most of the ngs tools they already know and they convert these uh, special sky characters to its unique value so this is like one read i have showed uh, so when we are sequencing it generates millions of reads so the sequencer will give you millions of reads and it is placed one below another and uh, this reads fast q reads are uh, in a text format so it can be visual vi visible with any notepad file so once you have that fast q file we, we need to check whether fast q file is good or bad so these reads when which we are talking about 
So for that, what we do is basic statistics test to check whether the fastq files are good or bad. So what it tells over here is the sequence length. What is the length of the fastq file and total number of sequences present in that fastq file? That is like 25,000, sorry, 2.2 million reads. So this is like 0.25 million reads is present in this uh, one of the fastq file. And here in the other, you, if you see, there's like 0.3 million reads is present. So if you look at the sequence length, it says 40. So sequence length is same, but here we, it is saying that it's a bad quality of data. So how exactly good or bad quality data is seen that I will show it over here. So good data is shown like this. So if we say that a read is 40 base pair long, so that A, T, G, C, and the stretch, the whole stretch is like 40 base pair long. It's kept over here. And at particular each of the position, a median value is calculated. So median value, that is your SKI value that was given. So at this particular position, it says 38 in the median of like 35 to 38. So this green represent a good region. Uh, this is a, a reasonable region, uh, region. And the last one is the poor quality region. So what we see over here is this reads are belonging to the good quality region. So we can say that definitely this uh, data is a good one. And here, if you just see, so the data is quite uh, like it's not normalized. Uh, the data is skewed. So if we see this data, so what is happening is that uh, the data values of each base at that particular position is ranging from 2 to 32 that is like a uh, huge differences we can see here and it's falling in the poor quality region that this is a uh, the graphical representation of the data which tells whether a good whether the data which was generated from the sequencer is good or bad so once we have this fastq data and now we have confirmed whether like there is, so sorry uh, so uh, we check that this is a good quality data and this is a bad quality data so when we have this bad kind, bad quality data, what we do is we perform trimming. Like you can perform trimming like till 20 basis, we can take uh, all the reads which are like 20 basis long and rest of us we can eliminate. And there is like, uh, if it is a good quality data, we can directly perform the variant analysis. So when I say variant analysis, uh, so what exactly happens over here is, first step is alignment. Now we had the, reads that was present in the fastq file and this is your human reference genome suppose we consider this to be a human reference genome and we want to map these reads because reference genome we know where exactly like chromosome one is from this uh, position to the end of the position so we all know about the reference genome but we don't know where these reads belongs to so there are several tools which uh, does mapping that there is one tool called bwa that is burroughs wheeler aligner uh, which aligns this tool to uh, which align these reads to this reference genome. So here, when the mapping is done, we can see the reference genome. So this is a like read one, read two, and read three are mapping to specific regions. So this is exactly how alignment is done. So once alignment is done, uh, next steps comes variant analysis. So for that, what we need to understand is that what are variants how are these variants identified and why variant analysis should be done and how can we perform this analysis so what are variants any change in a nucleotide which is compared uh, compared to the reference nucleotide can be called a variant so we know that reference genome is already there in the reference genome if it is a and in our read we are getting t so we know that uh, like there is a change in the uh, r sequencing as compared to the reference one so variant can be anything that can be SNP, indel, or sequencing error. So uh, my major focus is about SNPs and indels today. So how are these variants and, uh, identified? So simple comparison of any nucleotide position to the reference genome can, class, uh, can identify variants. And variant analysis is done to identify several mutations and to also predict whether these variants which we are identifying or the mutations which we are identifying, whether it has any deleterious effect or not, like whether it may lead to hampering of any protein, formation of proteins. So that is like why variant analysis should be done. 
and uh, there are several algorithms and specialized tools to perform this variant analysis. So uh, this is what exactly a uh, variant is. So in the reference, if you see over here, we have A that is like adenine. So here we see there are at least seven reads which are aligned to this reference. If we consider this A to be our reference read, so this is a reference base and then we have G that is our altered reads. So this is how the calculation looks like. So the reference where we say uh, is mapping to four A's and altered is like G that is three. So when we map to mapped our reads to reference, we see that there are four reads which are mapping to reference and three reads which are mapping to the altered. We know that it is not same. It, it has some difference in that base. Rest of all the reads are same. So when we have this, what the tool does is it calculates the total depth that is reference depth plus altered depth that is your seven. So when a variant is called that uh, when a variant is called uh, allele fraction is what matters to us right now. So uh, that tells us the fraction of the altered reads compared to the total reads at that particular position. So three divided by seven, that is your altered reads divided by total depth that gives you 0.42 allele fraction that is 42%. So if you take 40, uh, if I take cell a number of cells and from that 100 cells, I'm saying that 42% of cells have these kind of mutations, these kind of variants. And how these variants are uh, re variants are read is like when these uh, now once the variants uh, like uh, there is a change from A to G. So now we know when we map it to our known human reference genome, we know that it is EGFR gene which will belongs to chromosome seventh position, chromosome seven at this particular position, and there is A to G change. So now when we say this A to G change, now we know that it is a base change, but this three letter codon will lead to amino acid. That is S768G, that is serine to glycine. So EGFR P dot P is like protein change because here it was a codon change. Uh, this A to G is a base change. Here EGFR is protein change that is like S768G. Now we know that this protein S was get, is getting converted to G. There is a protein change in EGFR gene. So that's like that is the important part which we are trying to identify. So, so this is the VCF file which is generated after variant call is made. So here if you see these are the headers VCF headers. This is a text file. Uh, so double hash represents the VCF header and hash also represents header. So here it says chromosome position ID reference altered quality filter info format and these are the different samples which we have sequenced. So when we analyze it says at chromosome one at this particular position there is ACG converted to A or AT. So if we just look at the SNP here it is like uh, here there is a SNP. At chromosome one, the, at this particular position, there is A to G change, and pass is kind of filter where it uh, like there are several parameters which it needs to confirm. Like uh, like I have mentioned, reference depth and altered depth. There is like DP cutoff. There are several cutoffs through which these variants get passed, and based on that, it tells you whether it is a good variant or a bad variant. So. This is how the VCF file looks and this is like oh, how exactly the variant is. So once we so now what exactly we will see is how somatic mutation calling is done and also implication of germline databases. So if we consider like this to be a tumor patient, what we do is we collect tumor tissue from the patient from the cancer patient and also we collect the blood or adjacent normal from the same patient we process same like we we generate we do the sequencing first few file is generated this is a several uh, this is the same step where we are aligning it to the reference genome and ma making a variant call so once the variant call is made from the tumor tissue you can see here we are finding 
five variants okay these five variants could be five mutations in our dna and this is like from the blood a blood or you can say adjacent normal which is collected from the same patient so if when i sequence this i have only one variant present over here so when we are making somatic when we are basically doing somatic mutation call at that time we what we want is that we want to eliminate this germline variant that is present in the population in the general population it is present but what we want to identify is how exactly uh, like what variants are known to impact that cancer so if the if i want to identify from this five variants which is actually playing a role in cancer so that's how like what i'm trying to identify right now so when i eliminate this germline variant from this somatic one see so what happens is if we see that here there was one variant which is same like blood normal so this is like i can say the fourth variant it's a germline variant uh, so now once that is eliminated there comes germline databases so here i will be talking about this nomedi that is a population database where uh, this is a data set a database of caucasian population they have sequenced huge number of uh, germline germline uh, so they have sequenced a uh, huge number of uh, normal patients and uh, when they have sequenced this they have generated a variant calls which they call that if the, that variant is present in any population that is a benign benign or you can say germline it is present by birth so we have to eliminate those and what we have to focus is on the somatic calls now if you see there are like four variants which are still seen to be in tumor tissue so what exactly this gnomedi population will do is so this was from same individual but there this is a database collected from several population as well as from several individuals so it is possible that it might not be germline in this patient but it is known to be germline in uh, some other populations so that is where it plays a very crucial role and we have to eliminate those these kind of germline variants from our somatic variant so see uh, so if i just check the first one this variant is getting eliminated here so it is present in gnomedi population and hence it is getting eliminated now we are just remaining with three of the variants so from three of the variants if we ch just check uh, the first variant in the gnome ad we see that it is matching to the second one of them but in the second variant in the basically in the second read we have two variants one of which one is only matching and the second one is not matching so we can get rid of that particular variant and second variant is still pending now if you see the second variant has only one mutation so now these three can be classified as somatic mutation and this the one here is like is getting eliminated so like what we have eliminated is like we have eliminated at least three variants from our uh, variant list which was generated from tumor tissue so we get rid of all the possible germline variants which were usually called to be the uh, false somatic variant so this exactly tells us that several germline databases and there are several germline databases such as dbsnp exsc and gnomedi which are most uh, and uh, gnomedi was the one which was most widely common used and hence it is used to flag false somatic variants that is only the reason that we have used this and we have eliminated all the possible uh, germline variants from our list and second thing is this larger cohort uh, this cohort gromedi cohort is consisted of like caucasian population so there is a need of uh, ethnic specific population databases like we in india we see that there are like uh, very less sequencing performed on uh, normal samples of indian patients so if that is the case then we might there might be certain variants which is specific to our germline and our population but cannot be gotten i mean we cannot get rid of those so uh, we cannot get rid of that from this somatic list there are several reports which suggest that there are germline variants which are specific to ethnic population and may occur at very low allele frequency 
thereby increasing false positive somatic variance. To do eliminate all of these, we have GNOME-ADI and several other population databases so that we can, uh, what we have in last is the somatic variant color list. So when I say that uh, these somatic variant calls were made, how exactly that data is represented? So I, I showed you about like EGFR gene. So EGFR gene, and uh, this is like how exactly the data is represented. So if you see over here, this is a heat map where it shows 86 samples were sequenced. And from there, only 60 of the samples have either uh, have at least one mutation in them. So TP53, if we look, the, it says that it is altered, like it is mutated in 41.9% of samples. So this is like what exactly we want to know. So TP53, uh, so we know about TP53, that is like 41.9% is mutated. Now this data, what I'm showing here is of lung. So what majorly our focus is the EGFR. So we already know that EGFR is highly mutated in uh, lung cancer patients. So here, if we see, it's 20.9%. So how exactly this discovery will help us to identify whether what we are getting is true, correct, or like how exactly it's higher or lower. So for that, there are several databases such as uh, uh, TCGA datasets. So there is a whole uh, database available, uh, like CBIO portal, from where we can compare the frequency of these genes and we can identify what is what exactly is different suppose uh, we have a huge cancer samples that is like lung breast and prostate cancer so from those we can identify what is high i mean egfr is high in lung or egfr is high in prostate or egfr is high in uh, prostate cancer or breast cancer so that is what actually we are trying to look over here is and it will help us to uh, identify novel genes which might play a role in cancer so like egfr if we see this is 20.9 percent it says so further what we have made is mutation wise heat map if you see over here is there are several mutations which are present so the different types of mutations this includes uh indels as well as mutation like uh the one which we which i showed earlier it's like l8 l8 fighter so egfr has this particular mutation and it is in present in 5.4% of our population. So whether it is known same in the TCG dataset or not, that is like uh, will help us to identify. And there are several other information which can be associated like smoking status, PDL1 status, uh, there, whether the patient was treated or not, whether there is any metastatic which is happening. I mean, the uh, age related information is also present and the gender also. So what this uh, clinical information will tell us, it will help us to classify into two groups and we can see whether like this gender, if I consider gender is like female and male. So what I want to exactly look is whether EGFR is high in female or male. Okay, that is the one question which we can ask. There are different uh, aspect, different uh, questions that we can ask is like whether EGFR is high in uh, like patients who are older or younger. That is one of the questions which we can ask. So these are the questions which we can uh, ask from these kind of represented uh, mutation data. Also, if you see uh, like one of the uh, like when we say when we talk about lung, uh, smoking is one of the important factor which. Uh, which, which we can say that it impacts the lung the like the patient who smokes a lot can have lung cancer so for that if you see what i have exactly done is so this is just a representation of how exactly data are represented and how we can interpret from the data so if we see like uh, here what it shows is egfi is there and there were total 118 patients which belong to smoker group and 117 patients which belong to non-smoker group. What it shows over here is that in EGFR, it's 35%. 35% of patients in non-smoker category has EGFR mutation. And uh, so what it tells you is that EGFR is highly mutated in non-smoker patient as compared to smokers. Second thing is what I can see over here is the TP53 mutation. So if you see TP53 is higher, so TP53 is higher also what we 
generally know is EGFR is co-occurring with TP53. So some of the EGFR mutations are co-occurring with TP53, and hence we uh, like we can confirm whatever we are finding. So we uh, based on this finding, what we uh, what I have actually uh, analyzed, I can add, say that EGFR is higher in non-smoker patient as compared to smoker. KRAS, KRAS and TP53 is higher in smoker as compared to non-smoker patients. And this is like well known. It is well known. Uh, it is characterized as well known. So this is like how exactly uh, the genomic data is interpreted. And there are several. So this is like highlights what exactly I have presented till now. So we have talked about introduction to various omics and utility of those genomics and why and how genomic data is sequenced. Uh, fourth is utility of germline databases in somatic variant following because it plays a very important role. So lot of, uh, many and uh, like lot of germline databases or uh, normal samples need to be sequenced to help us to identify somatic variant calls. And uh, pipeline, there is a pipeline for somatic mutation calling. Uh, I'm not going to show, like, completely discuss about that, but uh, where exactly it went? Just a second, okay, sorry. Yeah. So this is like what I, uh, what I wanted to show, a, a variant analysis pipeline. So what happens is when we have positive file and it is aligned to human reference genome, and here I have mentioned all the tools which are used, that is BWA is used for uh, alignment purpose, then there is several steps of GATK is used and PCAR tools can also be used. And then for variant calling, we have used haplotype caller or mutec2 you can use. And then variant database information. So what happens is we had only a base change con con uh, information. So whether that base change is present in any of the population databases, I was talking about mostly about GNOME AD, but there are several other databases, but COSMIC here, it is a somatic database. Uh, rest all of them uh, are the population databases till now, which have been generated. So, what we eliminate? I mean, we eliminate all the population databases and we only keep which are known in cosmic or which are not present in any of the population databases. We also filter low coverage variants, and that's how we reach to the uh, good quality of variants which are present. And it is generated in map format. So. There are several tools which help us to prioritize those variants, whether it will play, like I mentioned about the deleteriousness of the mutation. So that deleteriousness of the mutation, will, uh, these tools will help us to tell, uh, will, will help us to identify whether that uh, the variant will lead to any protein impact or not. So that's how like we are identifying and the report is generated based on mutation-wise heat map and gene-wise heat map, which I showed earlier. Um, thank you. I am happy to take any questions if. Yeah. Uh, how can we get VC? Okay, just a minute. I will start. Uh, those who have questions, okay. Uh, so, one question is there. Good evening, sir. How can we get VCF5? So, I didn't get the question, but uh, so if you have fast few files, there are steps and tools which I have mentioned, which I just showed. Uh, so uh, that can help you to identify uh, to get the VCF file. So when you have fast file, file, uh, it will uh, like there is a uh, like BWA aligner which helps you to align it to the reference genome. And once that is done, like we you have a BAM file. From that BAM file, there is a tool called Mutec2 that will help you to identify somatic mutations. And that mutation caller will give you a VCF file. That is a variant call format because what we are trying to identify is a variant. So that will give you a variant call file. And if you are asking about a variant call file from different uh, like already sequenced data, so TCGA already has BAM and VCF files. So you can get it from possibly from there. So if you want to uh, analyze already published data and I mean, you can get the all the files from there. Uh, 